we now look at images formed by refraction and consider a slab of say glass or acrylic or something so slab of transparent material okay um, and you have some sort of source um, what we call our object point now this is the thing that's giving off the light rays Okay, and our object happens to be in a medium of index of refraction N1, and our slab of material is in index of refraction N2. Now, typically N1 will be air, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, so note that. Um, and so the whole idea here is to derive relationships uh, or a relationship for if we know what the two indices of refraction are, uh, can we say something about uh, where our image is going to be if we know where the object distance from the lens is, okay? Now, this rests on the idea that our slab has a uh, spherical surface face, okay? So this is a spherical curvature and therefore it will have some radius, what we call R, okay? Um, we don't need to keep that up and in fact it'll be easier if we don't. And, um, Note that R is also going to be here as well. This is going to be important. Um, if I can draw this as a straight line. Let's see. So this is R as well. Okay. Um, and so the whole idea is, where is the image going to be? Okay, so we're gonna let DO be the distance from the object to the edge of the lens. di is going to be the image distance um, we are going to let well I, really that's that's as far as symbols to define that's really all we need to define so suppose I have a light ray coming from my object and it hits, oh, by, by the way, we really should specify this. This line through the middle of the lens, this is what we call the optical axis. And it's gonna be imperative that uh, we let our object be on the optical axis. Okay, so uh, this isn't coming in at an oblique angle, all right? Uh, our light is not coming in at, a, at an oblique angle. But in any case, suppose we have our light uh, ray coming from our object and it hits the mirror right here. Not the mirror, but the lens right here, okay? So we have a normal right here with this dashed line and so we can apply Snell's law. Theta one being the angle that our light ray makes with respect to the normal in our first medium and theta two being the angle that our 
um, refracted beam makes with respect to the normal inside the lens, okay? So alpha is defined as the angle that our light ray makes with the optical axis. Phi is defined as the angle that our normal makes with um, the optical axis. The normal at the point that the light hits the uh, lens, by the way. Beta is the angle that our refracted beam makes with the optical axis. And so we have some geometry to look at here. Okay, so the entire idea, once again, is to derive a relationship for DI. This is what we're looking for. Okay, this is what we're looking for. If we apply Snell's law, Snell's law just says N1 sine theta 1 is equal to N2 times sine theta 2. Now, in practical situations, what's most of the time going to happen is that theta 1 is going to be small. So as we've done a few times now we're going to apply the small angle approximation and we're going to say that n1 times theta 1 is approximately equal to n2 theta 2. Right? But if I look at this triangle right here, let's use red Uh, no, not that triangle, this triangle. If I look at this triangle, okay, um, theta one is an exterior angle to this triangle. And from a theorem in geometry, uh, we know that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the opposite uh, interior angles. So what that means is that theta one must equal alpha plus phi, okay? And now if I look at um, this triangle right here, Okay, if I look at that triangle, we can see that phi is the exterior angle to theta 2 and beta. So that tells us that phi is equal to theta 2 and beta. Okay, so now we can put these into Snell's law. So we're going to have um, N1 times alpha plus phi equals N2 plus, okay, um, so theta two is equal to phi minus beta. Okay. Well, now looking at the geometry a little bit more, let's erase some of these markings. I now can use this triangle 
And again, if alpha is small and if theta one is small, then um, the little tiny distance here between the perpendicular dropped down onto the optical axis and the distance uh, where your object uh, length hits the lens here, this little tiny sliver of difference is negligible. Okay, and because this is negligible, we can say that tan alpha is approximately equal to H over DO. And if we look at this triangle, once again, remember that um, our radius is here. And if that little tiny distance is negligible between the perpendicular dropped from the optical axis or dropped onto the optical axis from our point of intersection on the lens and uh, to the front of the lens itself, if that is also negligible, um, then R or the radius of curvature will act as the uh, leg to this right triangle and we have tan phi is equal to uh, h over r. And we also have our expression for b and or beta I should say and our expression for beta is going to be from this triangle here okay so tan beta is approximately equal to h over di, which is the thing that we're trying to get at, okay? But we're in the small angle approximation. So in the small angle approximation, not only does sine theta approximate theta, but tan theta is approximately theta. So what that means is this is approximately h over d naught, or your object distance. This is h over r, and this is h over your image distance. Okay, so now we can plug these in to this equation. Okay, so I'm going to have n1 times the quantity alpha plus phi, but alpha is h over d naught, and phi is h over r. equals n2 h over r minus uh, do, 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 beta yeah h over di okay and um, our h's of course are going to cancel And we now have n1 over d naught plus n1 over r equals n2 over r minus n2 over di. Okay. 
And so N1 over D0 plus, uh, I'm going to move N2 over DI over to the other side. And I'm going to subtract N1 over R. Now you may be asking yourself, wait a minute, why are we doing this? I thought we wanted to solve for di. Well, we do, but this gives it to you, okay? Um, this contains everything that you would need. So if you're given uh, the object distance and you're given the two uh, indices of refractions and you're given the uh, radius of curvature, you can solve for the image distance. Okay, so you only need those as your inputs. I don't have to worry about the geometry. Once I'm in the small angle approximation, the geometry takes care of itself, all right? Um, and so from this equation, you can then derive a number of interesting results, okay? So we're not gonna go through the formal derivation here. I'll, I'll save that for another video. I will do it, but we'll save it for another video. The bottom line is, okay, for thin lenses, we have an equation that governs how images uh, are formed and where they're located per a given thin lens. And from this equation, we can derive The following, again, this is going to come in a later video, but uh, we can derive the following. Okay, now here's the kicker. We're gonna, we're gonna discuss just a little bit, but we'll save a lot of the details for another lecture. Oof. Okay, so we have what is called a thin lens. And if my radius of curvature is outward, this is what we call convex. If it's inward, then that would be concave. Okay, now why is this a thin lens? So the lenses have a maximum thickness through their center, especially if both of their curves are cut out of spherical shapes. Okay, but you have a thickness T to your lens. And so the assumption of thin lenses is that effectively your object distance is gonna be much greater than your thickness. Okay, it'll typically be much greater, but at least greater, okay? Um, so, we're gonna deal mostly with lenses where my two curvatures are equal. Okay, the radius of curvature is going to be equal for both sides. And um, well, I think that's it. I think that's all we really need to say about that. Okay, so our thin lens is one where our object distance is going to be much greater than the thickness, and our radius of curvature is the same for both sides of our lens. Now, why is this important? So, as I said before, the angles drop out of this result, okay? 
the angles drop out of this result, therefore, a consequence of this equation is all images that originate from the same point along the optical axis will have the same di. Now, this particular equation was derived for this giant chunk of material, this giant slab, not a thin lens where I have similar curvature on the other side. Okay, But the idea being that there will be an image formed from this first curved surface, and that image can then be used as the object for this curved surface the other side of the lens and then using Snell's law and the law of refraction or the laws of refraction you'll be able to calculate where your image is but if we have this situation where our lens is both thin and symmetric has both a uh, radius of curvature the same then what happens and this is what we will prove in another video but what happens is the lens develops two points, one on each side, called the focal point. And so what this means is that any light that is originated from D naught that goes through the lens um, will have specific properties with respect to this focal point. Okay. Now, it'll depend on whether your object is further than the near focal point or far uh, nearer to the lens than the uh, near focal point or further away. But the bottom line is that it has a symmetric set of focal points. And the distance from the lens to either of the focal points is what we call the focal length. Okay, so this F in this equation, the thin lens equation says one over the focal length is equal to one over the object distance plus one over the image distance. Okay, this is what the thin lens equation says. So with that in mind, um, once we have the object distance and the focal point or the focal length, we can absolutely then calculate where the image is going to be. Okay, so we will save uh, ray tracing and ray diagrams for the next video, but this is kind of setting the stage for that, okay? So we will see you next time.